I bought some plants to deal with boredom and it seems to have turned into a bit of an obsession. <laughs> now it's one of my favourite things to do. Talk to plants. Hey folks, it's Finn. <laughs> Welcome back lovely people. Thanks again for checking out another one of my videos. Thanks as always for checking out another one of my videos and checking in with me. And thanks as always if you're new to my vlogs for checking out one of my videos. And I've seen lots of new folks at the moment, lots of new faces around the comment section. Well, I haven't actually seen faces, I've just seen comments, but I imagine faces when I read comments, if you know what I mean. It's always nice to read new comments from new folks and imagine new faces and see new faces in my head from those comments that I read. <laughs> It's going to be one of them days. Anyway, what I'm saying is it's lovely to see you. Old and new, it's lovely to see you. Thanks for tuning in. Right, so yesterday, no, not yesterday, but today. <sighs> this is one of those moments where I just want to press the button and go, no, start again. But no, we don't do that anymore, do we? We just carry on regardless. So today, what I would like to talk about is boredom and frustration when it comes to living with chronic illness, which for me, as long time followers know and new faces, commenters know, <laughs> is ME-CFS, myalgic encephalitis, otherwise known as chronic fatigue syndrome or ME-CFS. I also have hypothyroidism, but recently I was discussing this in a PIP interview and the chap said to me, what about your symptoms of hypothyroidism? And I was like, well, they just blend into one, don't they? I couldn't really tell you the difference, but it's a condition I have. But I don't know really, because all of these things just blend into one now. <laughs> I just have chronic illness of which these things are listed and these symptoms just merge. So yes, dealing with Boredom and <laughs> frustration is something that comes up. Now, this was actually a question because I just asked anybody and everybody if in this new style of vlogging where I just literally press record once a week and speak about what's ever on my mind, whether you'd like to just send some questions in and I'll just about those. So Kim sent a question in in one of the comments and this is such a really really good question because it's something i'm still really managing in lots of different complex ways and that is how do i deal or we in the royal we how do we deal with boredom and frustration in chronic illness and i've written down a little bit of what kim said as kim said how do you deal with the boredom and frustration you know, in the early days, it's almost kind of easier because we know that we need the rest and we're so fatigued that we do rest. But then over time, resting gets boring or we might get a little bit better, but still need to rest. And then that gets boring. And then we kind of do this thing where we kind of accept to a certain degree that we need to rest. But there's this kind of process, as, as Kim said, of like, well, OK, I'm resting for now. I'm accepting that I'm resting for now. But then there's this new realisation that this might be forever. And then it's just like, no, I can't cope with the fact that my life's going to be this sedentary forever. And it's just this, as, as Kim said, it's driving them mad in terms of like, is this ever, forever? What do I do? How, how can I be this bored? It's just awful. It, and I completely relate. I've gone through periods of this. I'm still going through periods of this and it's hard. So in like my own journey with this, in the very, very beginning, when I was very, when this very much first started, I mean, I've been having issues with fatigue for many, many years. I used to have fatigue alongside anxiety anyway, so I'm not a stranger to fatigue as such. Because when you live with mental illness, when you have severe depression and anxiety, fatigue is part of that. Because masking in public, the mental energy it takes to 
look after yourself on a daily basis is exhausting. Living with anxiety, doing the stuff you need to do on a daily basis is exhausting. But it's not the same kind of exhaustion as a chronic fatigue exhaustion. With chronic fatigue exhaustion, when you get a real hit of chronic fatigue, you can't be bored. You can't be bored because you can't physically do anything anyway. And this is actually how I very first knew that something was seriously wrong with me because I was used to having bouts of fatigue or bouts of severe mental health that would make me kind of stay indoors and often not leave my bed. But in those times, I would take to my bed or take to the sofa for like maybe a, a few days or a week at a time. But in those states of mind, whether it was from fatigue, from anxiety or fatigue in general, just like not wanting to face the world for a bit because of depression, I would curl up under a duvet, under a blanket. I'd be on social media. I'd be browsing Netflix. I wouldn't be bored as such. I'd be doing stuff. But when this new fatigue hits, it was like something else entirely. I remember the very first day it happened where I physically thought I was going to fall down on the pavement and just lie there and die. <laughs> I didn't know what was going on with me. And I got myself home and I was lying on the bed and I, I just couldn't do anything. I thought, okay, I hadn't even taken my jacket off. And I was lying there and, and I can remember thinking I really needed the toilet. And I managed to pick up my phone and see how long it had been. And I'd been lying there for about a couple of hours. And then a couple more hours passed and I thought I really need to go to the toilet. And I managed to go. And then a whole week like this passed with me very barely moving. And I remember this one day in, in this week where I thought, well, I'll put the telly on. And I could see the remote control. And I was just staring at it. And... I couldn't even move to put it on, but I almost didn't care that I couldn't move to put it on. And I should have been really afraid in this kind of state of like what was going on with me. But I was so fatigued that there wasn't even the fear there. There was no room for almost fear or boredom or any of these feelings. It was just this utter fatigue that my whole body was like winding down. It was so bizarre and it wasn't until the end of the week when that started lifting that the fear then kicked in and the kind of bewilderment of like this is not right I'm really not well and these then started to happen more and more frequently and so in those very like huge bouts of fatigue that I was getting which at the time were in cycles I'd have them for say a week two weeks at a time and then nothing for a month and then again and they were happening like that in when they did happen I couldn't be bored or frustrated because I would literally be just on the bed unable to really do much or move when I wanted to eat go to the toilet it would take me ages to move and I would drag myself to wherever I needed to go to the toilet to the kitchen wherever it was horrendous and that's what's been happening since getting really sick last year and it becoming permanent so in those states, no, you can't really be bored. And that's when it is easier. Kim's right. In those states, it's almost easier to manage. Now, what isn't easier to manage is the in-between stages. And this is what I very much struggle with. And this is, I think, what Kim's talking about, when we need to pace. So pacing is easy when you're heavily fatigued. In that state, it's easy. And then when, because you have lots of different levels of fatigue, I need to make a video of this. So I have the real like, oh, I've crashed. I'm pinned to the bed. I can't move fatigue. Then I have heavy fatigue where I can kind of drag myself through a day and do basic self-care and sit around the house. And then I have what I just call everyday fatigue. It's like that when you wake up in the morning and you can't quite open your eyes, but that lasts all day. In that, that is my base level of fatigue. In that, I get bored. And in that level, that's my feeling better level of fatigue, by the way. And in that level, it's like, oh, I feel better today so I can do something. But I know I still can't do a lot because if I do, I risk causing post-exertional malaise. 
it's like I spoke about a few weeks ago, that it's in those states that I can go out and do things, but I still risk then triggering post-exertional malaise if I'm not careful, i.e. Glastonbury and so forth. You know, it's this is the rolling the dice that we live with when we have chronic conditions that we have to weigh up. Do I still go off and do these things I enjoy knowing that I might suffer later? And how can I limit that payback by doing the thing I love, but in a, a slower way? And then that's when the boredom kicks in because you're like, I want to do this thing, but I've got to hold myself back. And it's so hard. It really, really is. And in the very beginning, just to have to sit there, I didn't get it because I was like, okay, all right, then I'll just do thing, more things sitting down. I'll just do more things just watching telly. And I didn't get it that you have to just stop and rest because energy is energy. Even if you're just watching telly, you know, it's all energy. Proper rest means sitting, stopping everything. No watching anything, no listening to anything, stopping. You need loads of that kind of proper rest in amongst your day, you know. In the recent thing I'm reading, it's they think talk, talk about it in terms of being pillars of rest throughout a day. So if you imagine a bridge, if a bridge has only got one pillar, it's not very strong. So you've got to think about pillars of rest over this bridge. So if you've got three or four pillars over the, under this bridge, holding the bridge up throughout a day, that's much better to support you. And these pillars have got to be pure rest. Sit, close your eyes, block off all sensation, ears, eyes, everything, and rest for periods throughout the day to conserve energy, to try and get a bit of energy back. That's what we need to do. And that's what I found so very, very hard in the beginning to do and to even just slow down and stop. And... Do you know what I realised for me was that, and this is something I've been realising for a while, in very slow kind of waking up ways over the last few years, is that since, I, I've made a video about this and I will link it because it explains in more detail about how in going through recovery, going through transition, and in suddenly being able to, have a life and actually want to live there's all this wanting to catch up with all the stuff I've missed and building this business of mine and being successful and getting a degree and writing a book and all of these things I've done they're amazing but it's almost like I was like subconsciously trying to kind of make up for what I'd missed and prove to myself how much I could how, how much I was worthwhile you know that my my worth was equal to my output. I hadn't really thought about it this way, but that's how I was living. I read this amazing book and I keep recommending it to everyone. And it's called Laziness Doesn't Exist by Devon Price. And it was this that really changed things for me because I realized just how much I'd been pinning my worth on my output. And this was what my uncomfortability was coming from more than anything, my frustration, my boredom, was coming from this guilt of thinking I should be doing I shouldn't just be sitting I should be doing I should be I haven't achieved anything today I haven't done anything today I've just sat I've just led I've not done anything I've not achieved but someone says what have you done today nothing this sick feeling of guilt you know so that is what's helped me the most it's not I mean I can tell you there's lots of things I've suddenly started doing that have helped to fill in the boredom but what's changed everything for me the most is my mindset in realizing that I'm okay to just be I don't have to be running around doing everything to, to be worthwhile I can just stop so I do really recommend reading that book because that's helped me to see how much we're ingrained by society that it's wrong to stop when actually we're designed to rest and the reason so many people are poorly is because we get messages that we can only be worthwhile if we're achieving, succeeding, you know, against all odds, this kind of thing all the time. I'm really trying to change the way I think about motivation. If you follow me on my other social media, you'll see that I'm playing with this a lot at the moment. I'm trying to really rethink and relook at and 
everything that I've been doing over the last few years because of course success and self growth is important and amazing and wonderful and as humans we evolve that's what we do but there's a more balanced way of doing it and I think as humans we've gone off kilter and I definitely did so there's been a lot of bonus for me in becoming unwell in some ways it's helped me to kind of get more of a balance back that I'm really grateful for and in this new mindset it's helping me now to start enjoying a slower pace of life and actually one of the biggest things I enjoy doing is growing plants right and if you'd have asked me a year ago if I like growing plants you'd know that I'm notorious for killing things plants not people um, this isn't a confession I now I mean it looks like Kew Gardens in here in a minute I'll, I'll take you round in a minute I'll show you a few plants what started as just one piece lily this one here that I thought I might kill has just grown into this well we'll have to call it an obsession really because they're just everywhere now Chris has put up a hanger for me so I can start even hanging them from the ceiling and they're even hanging in baskets from here now uh, but some of it's Chris's fault because we went shopping yesterday and we found this one that was called a flamingo plant or something and we thought it looked like penises so we had to have one of those but yeah they're everywhere really um the string of hearts that's usually behind me on here is now up there so yeah it's an ever-growing family of plants in this house i know i'm going to, i do owe you an updated house tour members have had a brief one i will do a general one for everyone else soon but i've got so many house plants and once upon a time i've gone oh, that's that's just wasted energy i could be writing i could be making a video, I could be doing some editing, I could be learning, I could be doing this. You know, I never had any spare time because it was always like, wasted. What's a plant? What's that going to do? It's just wasted wiping leaves. What's the point? You know, that kind of attitude. And whereas now, you know, just to sit and look at my plants, I've grown from little tiny babies to sit there and wipe their leaves. You know, just to sit in a garden. I mean, it's lovely. I've got this garden now. Just to sit. I mean, I wouldn't have sat before. Because I'd be like, oh, I should be doing something, I should be doing something. I'm getting all twitchy, you know? Whereas now I can sit much, much more than I've ever been able to. I lost the ability over the last few years because I've just been on this kind of treadmill. And while I don't think it's caused my chronic fatigue, it's definitely played a part in it for sure. Because, you know, I think, I mean, I need to make a video about this as well. But my immune system has taken a battering over the years. My nervous system has taken a battering over the years. And that hasn't helped either. And, you know, so, Kim, this has been a very long answer to this question. But I I hear you. I, I know what you're going through. I mean, I'm, this is, I'm not a perfect human being. I'm still doing this myself right now. And there's two levels to this, really, because there's a personal answer to this in terms of my personal life and how I'm adapting to the boredom and frustration in that aspect and I think I'm doing really well in that because enjoying this slower pace of life in terms of my personal life spending more time with Chris spending more time just looking at the world and being in the world is wonderful but where I'm still trying to learn this is in my work life and how I'm trying to deal with the boredom and frustration around work and how I'm losing so much of my own work that is my passion and I think I might do another video just on that aspect but I hope this bit of a long-winded answer sorry <laughs> has helped a bit do have a look at Devon's book because it is so incredible and it definitely helped me to shift my mindset from boredom and frustration and look at why I might what might be playing into my boredom and frustration from my own inside of like what I thought I should be doing does, does that make sense and just think of other little things you can do whilst you're resting that are lower energy you know I think somebody put something in the comments as well I mean people by the way do feel free to answer we've got a lovely comment section you know if if you have answers and you've tried stuff you know talk to each other that's what communities are for aren't they so you, if you've tried stuff share with other people I'm sure people won't mind but there is lots of stuff you can do that's more sedate but like me I was very much no I need to do big things but little things writing in journals coloring crafting plants you know these things can all 
be really lovely to enjoy it when you have a slower pace of life. It does take a huge adjustment, I know, it really, really does. Now we're off camping this weekend and I've actually done more camping since becoming chronically ill, which is really strange. And I'm not, of course, suggesting that if you have chronic illness, you go camping because it doesn't really go particularly well together. Chris and I have adapted it to make it a lot easier. I mean, we go car camping, we park right next to the tent, we have a proper camp bed and an inflatable mattress and all the things. I'll put the vlog up about all of that. And I'm, of course, very blessed and privileged to have Chris, who comes with me and puts the tent up, puts the tent down, and is here to look after me in the week after when I have the inevitable crash. But why I'm mentioning it is because before I kind of changed my mindset around the slower pace of life, I have said no to the camping because I'd have been like, oh, I can't go away, I've got too much to do. Or if I'd have gone away, I'd have taken my laptop and I'd have been working away. You know, I just never ever stopped. So becoming chronically ill is in a lot of ways really helped me to reevaluate the way I live my life and slow down a lot and really appreciate slowing down and living much more slowly. You know, it's been, it's been a tough learning curve, but I think one that I really, really did need to learn and now it's, it is a much better quality of life you know so no of course don't take up camping unless you absolutely can but the whole point is that it's not all bad it is, it is tough at times to deal with all the things I now can't do or can do but have to do at a much slower pace or can do but then suffer for but there are still benefits as well in having more quality time, noticing more of the world again and all of these things. And that's what I try and hold in mind. So I really, really hope that helped. It was a lot longer than I actually planned. So I'm really, really sorry about that, but I hope it was worth it. So yeah. By the way, do you like my new t-shirt? Talking about camping, I got a little present this week from the paper bag company who make these epic festival bags. I don't very often get stuff sent to me. It's always nice when I get sent stuff. It's like a weekend, week away festival bag containing all kind of environmentally friendly stuff, like wash stuff, to stuff, ponchos, all good for the environment, and this epic t-shirt as well. So I'm gonna try that while, I, while I'm away. I also want to tell you that I've recently cut my own hair and that I did something really silly, right? I don't know if you've been noticing that I had this like big because I've been trying, I've been cutting my own hair recently because it's too hard to get to a barber's. I had this massive step in my hair, right? It's because I've been using a number eight, then a number two, because I've been misreading the number on the grade. It was a number eight, not a number three, because I've been going number three, number two, number one. But then last month I went number eight, number two, number one. <laughs> no wonder I had a step in my hair, so this time it's much better. So I've done it myself, and I just chopped into it with scissors, so... You know, that's something else you can learn to do yourself when you have chronic illness is home haircuts. <laughs> Always a bonus. Right, I'm going to sign off. So, yes, we are off to Lenesley in Wales. I can never pronounce Wales, Welsh words. So we will see you in a week. There won't be a vlog next week, but if you are on social media, Insta and Facebook, you will see updates from us from Wales. It likes to be heavily sheep themed because you know me and my love of sheep. Thanks so much for watching everybody and a big thank you and shout out to Chiaki who is our recent signing member to the Friends of Finn Club. I hope I've said, said your name right Chiaki. If I haven't, big apologies. I have a notorious reputation for not being able to pronounce words properly at the best of times. But yes, very big welcome to our Friends of Finn Club. It's lovely to have you. Take care of yourselves, everybody. Have a great week. Whatever you're up to, feel free to let me know in the comments as per usual. And I will see you when we get back from Wales. And I look forward to sharing our adventures with you. Take care, everyone. Love you loads. Bye-bye. So talking